there guys, this is me Malorian and this will be another War Machine Battle Report and Game 3 in the October Brawler Steamroller I went to on the weekend. Now this one here will be up against Andrew and will have a little bit of element of revenge to it. So in the last game we played, I was up against his Menoth Sebi 2 with my Buccaneers and I was all over him, I surprised him, I was feeling great. And then I didn't knock down Magnus, got too close, and he magically assassinated me. I was like, ah! And so now, I had the, the chance to come back and, and get a little bit of revenge. But, I was really not sure if I should drop the Buccaneers against him. Because now he's, we've actually chatted <laughs> and talked about on Facebook about the ways to be countering Texas and the Buccaneers. And... I'm not really sure if this is the right scenario for it. It's definitely one where if I can get into a zone quickly, I can get over there and I can lock it down, and then I can dominate quickly for the win, but he also has that one like little ninja guy that can make things difficult for me. I just, after thinking about it, I thought, you know what, even though it pains me, I'm not gonna do the Buccaneers, I'm gonna do Texas. I think it's the safest way forward. Uh, plus in the last game he was really kind of slow on the clock so I think I might get a clock thing here going too but we'll see what happens so either way I decide to drop Texas he dro decides to drop Sevi too and I'm just planning to go it all over him I definitely think this will be a scenario victory overall but we'll uh, we'll see what happens so the first thing I do is basically run up there. Now he is praying the middle unit there of the slavers. So they hold up a little bit back just so they can't be shot by the Idrian's first turn. Otherwise I do deceleration because why not? And I'm pretty much just running up there. On his turn, he's going to go up there, he's going to put up a spell up onto the Idrian so I can't cast magic against them, and they get plus two defense. The, the not targeting with magic thing is not really a big deal, because I can always just go and target something else behind and spray them. Uh, otherwise, the choir did make it so I can't do any spells to the jacks, so that's also going to limit my options. Uh, luckily for my sprays, I don't need light of sight, so I can always, like, I'm going to target the rack, or the, the choir in the back, or something like that, right? So I can have ways of getting around it. Uh, talking about ways of getting around things, he uses Roven Co. to give one of his Idrians the ability to see through stealth and takes a shot at one of my overlords, which really should have killed him, but luckily he rolls garbage and uh, does not really do very much at all. Actually, he leaves me on one box, so that was just really bad dice on his place. So otherwise, I am ready just to keep on running at him. So that's what I do, I go up with the overlords, I'm spraying, I need eights, but I do get a couple of the Idrians down, so that's good. Otherwise, you can kind of see him just kind of like all over the place. Now, his arc node is on the right side, so I'm going to go to the left side with Texas. I have learned my lesson, he has killed me dead with magic, and Texas is definitely a guy you can kill with magic. So I just basically head over to the left, that's going to be the zone I'm going to go after. I have deceleration up again. And, uh, yeah, just waiting to see what he does back to me. So on his second turn, he's really just getting into the zones here. So really starting to kill off some of the guys there on the right. You know, starting to do his ashes to ashes or whatever his spell is. So starting to kill off a few guys there. Uh, he's also being very sure to start trying to pick out all my leaders. So wherever you see, like, the Signar shield icon, that's me now showing who the new leaders are. So he's going to do a, a good job of killing them. Also getting the Reckoner into the zone there on the left. And of course with that ability where he gets to ignore the first hit on them and there's no magic against them, it's going to be really hard to get them out. Now, another thing I really noticed here too is that Andrew really stepped up his clock game. So I think maybe last time he was only slowing the clock because it was his first time seeing Buccaneers. It was just a huge thing to throw him into the tank. No, he is going fast this game and there is no way I'm going to be clocking him out. So now I'm deciding it's going to be my first time to start going for scenario and uh, I'm going to go and try and do it on the left. Now, even though I can't really do much to the one Reckoner, I can feed him out. And if I just kill the right Idrians, I can dominate the zone. So that's what I do, I come over and I feet, I get the Reckoner and whatever Idrians I can out of the zone, and then between the Slavers, I'm able to kill off the Idrians that are left inside the zone, otherwise I'm spraying other Idrians, just slowly trying to take those guys down. Again, that's where the most models are, so I'm just trying to 
take them out so he can't really come back at me. Otherwise, you know, Thex is in the zone, the Reckoners come over so that they can kind of, you know, threaten things whenever it gets in the zone later. And uh, yeah, otherwise a swarm, swarm, swarm. Like I said on the right side, I'm not even thinking I'm going to be scoring there. I just want to make sure he doesn't score. And at the same time, put enough pressure on him so that that arc node doesn't just run across. So yeah, uh, his feet, I forgot to talk about his feet. That's why all these circles are here. His feet did cause me some issues, killing off more of my key models and having all these big clouds all over the place. I actually felt kind of bad because when he went for his feet, I kind of like, oh yeah, he's dead, and I kind of forgot about the cloud. So some of these clouds could have been positioned in a way that would have restricted me even more, but we just did our best after the fact to put them down. This is totally my fault. I really shouldn't remove the models first, so at least two of those clouds could be slightly different, and it's kind of hard to tell how things would have maybe been different, but either way, I have dudes in this space, and I'm going to score, except that we're going to make a mistake here. Uh, after I was in here, I was like, yeah, I scored he tells me well you can't because you went first and I was like oh I just wasted my feet for nothing and I don't score well we lost track of turns and uh, yeah this is actually now my third turn so I really should be at two nothing but we're thinking that it's zero zero still so there's something to kind of keep in mind of otherwise now on his next turn he's gonna start getting back into the zone keep on trying to kill off as many of my guys as possible uh, again he's trying to target the most critical models but more importantly I mean I got the reckoner I can go over on the left but he put his scourge of whatever in the middle and I'm really feeling I can hit him with both of my reckoners and if I can get that guy gone I'll be feeling great I mean otherwise I can put guys around the other reckoners they'll have to trample to get somewhere and they really can't do much damage after that so yeah I, even though I thought it originally I was going to go for the scenario game since I thought I screwed up the scenario game now I'm going to go for attrition so I'm able to send in the one Reckoner after I go and agitate and all that stuff, or instigate rather. And yeah, it only takes the one Reckoner to take down the Scourge. Again, I mean, I always think that these guys are going to be so hard to take out, but when the guy gets in there at Mat 7, POW 19, he's going to be having a free charge because the guy's being around Texas. Yeah, I, I'm able to take down heavies with this one Wrecker really easily. So the Scourge goes down. And I'm able to save Wrecker 1, so I'm able to come over more to the left to be dealing with whatever I want to after. Otherwise, I'm just swarming him. Guys are just getting in his way. I'm making sure to just get a lot of stuff around Sevi and just trying to stay alive. Now, one of the things I also did stupid this turn is that Texas should probably be behind that rock right now or somewhere back. But I was still so on personal tilt from thinking that I feeded when I couldn't score that I totally even forgot to activate Texas. <laughs> it was double dumb because one, I shouldn't be forgetting to activate a caster, and second of all, you know, I, I should have scored anyway, <laughs> but uh, yeah, uh, Texas should be further back, and now looking at this, I was a little bit worried he might be able to trample to me or something like that, but uh, hopefully he doesn't. And he does not, he does go after the Wrecker and fails to take it down. You know, he comes in and he gives his guys battle and stuff like that, but it, it just doesn't really matter. You know, when he tramples in, that means he loses his initial, it takes a focus, so each one is only able to make one attack, or two attacks rather, and it's just, you know, there's a full grid, and by attacking me, you load me back up again. So I'm going to survive. I actually was lucky and I survived with all my systems. Even if he did take out a few, I could have healed it. Uh, but otherwise, I'm a little bit worried about on the right side because while I'm doing this attrition, he's also starting to attrition more in the right zone. So I'm starting to worry that he might be able to start scoring on the right before I get my attritioning done. So I just really need to go in there now. Each wrecker needs to take out a reckoner, and then if I can start scoring on the left side, then I'll be feeling great. So that's what I do, I instigate again, send in the wreckers, they go up and just destroy the reckoners, no problem. I just clear out the zone, uh, dominate, so in my mind at, at the during the game, I think it's 2 nothing. it's actually 4 nothing right now, and otherwise just trying to get more things in the zone and over onto the right, uh, just to kind of really push this home. So on his turn, he's going to get a little more desperate here. He realizes he's really losing the attrition game and that scenario is going to start going against him too. So he tries and find a way to clear the way so that he can get his heavy over to me. Not his heavy, his light. 
Uh, but unfortunately, Sebi just has to go through his entire stack just because he keeps on missing the hit, missing the hit. It actually happened before, too, where he's trying to swing at things over the wall to clear the way, and he just keeps on missing. So he's had some pretty bad dice. I mean, it's not like Sebi's a combat monster, but he should be hitting more than he should. So Sebi's kind of there, flapping in the wind. In the end, he wasn't able to clear a path. So he does kill a lot of the stuff in the zone on the right there to the point where he's almost ready to score. Uh, plus, I mean, as you can see, he's done a great job of killing all my guys, but uh, now I'm at a point where if I wanted to, I could just keep on doing this scenario attrition game, but Sevi is right there with two wreckers, so we're going to finish it that way. So that's what I do. I clear the zone just by blowing up a guy and then send in a wrecker. And it doesn't even matter about how many wreckers I have because one instigated wrecker does one hit and that kills Sevi to right there. So again, we thought that I also scored and went up to four points. This would have also gotten all the scenario, but it really doesn't matter, guys. In the end, it was just this list getting in there and able to do the attrition. Now, Andrew and I talked about after that, probably one of the things he should have done is in the peace trade, trying to offer up the Reckoners first rather than losing the Scourge. Losing the Scourge really took out a lot of his hitting power to try and go back at the Wreckers, but it's really hard to set up that peace trade on his side, right? Even though he has three heavies to my two heavies, I have so many guys that I can kind of line the things up, and then if I really want to, I can TK things and stuff like that. I have a lot of threat. So either way, guys, this is at three wins right now in the tournament. I am looking great. Uh, apparently now I'm just going to be going down to the final up against my buddy Garnet. So we'll see what happens there with his cricks. But uh, yeah, really feeling good about this game and the way it ended up, even though I derped twice with not re realizing what turn it is, uh, forgetting to activate my caster, it still worked down the end. So thanks for watching, guys. If you have any comments or anything like that, please post it down below, and we'll catch you later. Bye. Hey there, if you liked watching this video, please go down and give it a like down uh, below you here. And if you have any concerns or questions or comments, please put those in the comment section as well. You know, the best way for me to give you what you want to see is if you tell me what you like seeing and what you don't like seeing. So otherwise, thanks for watching and we'll catch you later.